We got beer mail. Hey, beer beer mail! Beer mail. <laughs> yeah, you're bringing the hype already. Beer mail! <laughs> hey, beer nerds. It's uh, Ryan and Brenda with Beer, beer by the Numbers. Yeah, I know. You're so hyped about the beer mail, aren't you? Beer! But yeah, it's going to be good. Well, big news is we got some beer mail uh, from Hillbilly Select Reviews, who is uh, ab- actually just to talk a moment about that channel. Uh, really like all the things he's got going on over there. So he does, he started out with just wine reviews, but eventually evolved into doing beer and then coffee and tea too, which is actually quite good. I like that. Yeah. And you know, we're both big coffee and tea drinkers. So yeah, they, uh, uh, lots of good reviews of stuff going on there. And then plus, you know, totally get all the info on the different beer scene too, you know, definitely get, uh. Definitely get some Kentucky stuff over there today. So we nice. got, yeah, but like I said, we got beer mail from Kentucky today. We've never so, had beer mail from Kentucky. I know. We got we got some Oregon, which was pretty good. I've Nothing never from, even been to Kentucky. I know. I've never been to Kentucky either. So let's dive into this thing. Some nice packing here. <laughs> Kitchen! Throw that, oh, to the, goodness. throw that to the cat. She, maybe she won't bother us so much. All right. Well, good. Now I can stop playing with fish. Yeah. All right. We got <laughs> We got five beers here, so I'm going to oh pull goodness. these out in no particular order. So first is the Monic Beer Company IPA, which looks very good. This one's out of Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. Good old Louisville. <laughs> yeah. Louisville. And looks, oh, they even put the uh, lovely ingredients on the side here. So Ooh. some German Vienna malt, two-row barley, Centennial Cascade and Mosaic with some American ale yeast. So... You know, actually a pretty traditional sounding IPA there. Not yeah. Nothing too like crazy. You know, and actually as, as a hop head, that's actually really good now and again is to get some, an IPA that's not trying to be really out there. Yeah. You know, hopefully this is something that's really easy drinking. So yeah, this is Monic Beer Co's IPA. I kind of dig that they put the ingredients on the can. Like every I know, other you get thing the, in the you world. Get, you get kind of the grain bill on there too, which is kind of neat. So yeah, that's really. Uh, I just really want to cool. know where Schnitzelberg is. Schnitzelberg. They've got a stamp on here for Schnitzelberg. For Schnitzelberg. Yeah, they sure do. I don't know if the camera will be able to read that, but that's oh, really cool. It focused for a second. Schnitzelberg. <laughs> Schnitzelberg. All right. <laughs> well, much hype for Schnitzelberg then. I- Purely by name alone, I want to know more about Schnitzelberg. And oh goodness, we already got J.O. from the Party Source and Bumpy Road Brewery. Which, by the way, if we ever make it to Ohio, we got to do the Super Ohio Beer Tour, which would be hitting up, you know, like Brewdog's Columbus facility. And then I think, I'm pretty sure the Party Source is in Cincinnati, if I remember correctly. So then you have to go down there to hit up this liquor store and i and out of curiosity i just went to the website the other day even though i've never been there never even like really been around there but that was like nowhere near like close. the party source not only does jo do a great job with their youtube channel but they have a ridiculous liquor store there <laughs> i love like, ridiculous liquor it's stores. like insane so really cool all right so next up we have denied which is a rye india pale ale <laughs> yeah and has this lovely guy <laughs> saying that you are denied here. This probably is a reference to something. <laughs> this is by Mild Wide, Mild Wide Beer Co. out of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, 6.5% ABV. Has a nice independent beer sticker on there. Um, but other than that, not too much on this one. Always flowing. But, you know, a rye IPA. And that actually makes a lot of sense coming out of Kentucky now, doesn't it? That yeah, I can work with that, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. This this is logical. Mm-hmm. Did you know that Louisville loves responsible drinkers? I didn't know. I'm that, in this for yeah. like the obscure can facts. <laughs> the obscure can facts, yeah. Well, that's what we get. All right. Next up, we have the Louisville City Golden Ale by Falls City Beer. Again, out of Louisville, Kentucky. We're getting the entire Louisville tour here. Okay. Why is this like very Nolans? Yeah, with the boys. When the boys in purple are storming down the pitch, give them a yell of support and raise a can of refreshing golden ale with citrus hops and rye malt to let them know you're all in for the city. This must be in a reference to a team that's there. Yeah, I don't yeah. know who's there. Uh, yeah. It's like Sounds like soccer club based by the, uh, yeah, must the verbiage be. there. Yeah, if they use the word pitch, that's probably it. You're right. Very cool. Very cool. 
Well, they don't play a lot of cricket. No, that's not on a pitch. Rugby's on a pitch. Rugby's on a pitch, too. Yeah, I guess you're right. Ooh, that could do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, got another one from Mile Wide. Wait, hang on. What's this up? is like the coolest can ever, and you didn't say anything. It's like embossed. Oh, you're right. Like, there's Look some at that. raised portions that I am, I guess it's not really. Now, now do you think it's embossed or I just I was stickers? like, it's not really embossed <laughs> because it's a can, and that right. would be problematic. Yeah. But there is some some raised lettering mm. and like detail work over the top of this that I love. And they also did my favorite, which I don't think you'll be able to see at all. Oh yeah, you can. The the matte versus gloss tone on tone that just says Fall City over and over and over again in the background is killer. Okay, so if you ever wonder if the Nielsen data that says women are much more interested in the labels themselves is true. You, you got Hi. proof right here. And and it's, and I would, and not to say your analysis is bad, because actually it's quite in-depth I and was good. like, graphically, it's quite a good analysis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not to say your analysis was bad at all, but, you know, <laughs> me, I'm like, all right. Look what? at this thing stalking us in the background. I Sorry. Know. She's ready to come in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But like, not that your analysis of the graphics was bad, but it was just like, oh yeah, you know, I yes, me, I was all about, all right, what's in the can? <laughs> no, you're like, Brenda's no. all about what does the can? Look you're like, like, no, let's take a second look at this can here. Yeah, so like, yeah, hang very... on, you've missed the best part of the can. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Next up, uh, also from Mile Wide, we have the Leroy, Leroy Brown Ale with a, Ooh. you know, King Kong holding on to what looks like an old Grange storage bin. <laughs> Uh, you know, swatting at an old prop plane. So there we go. This one has some cool, subtle, uh, you know, uh, casino stuff in the background too. Some dice, a couple of cards. My lights kind of blurring that out a little bit, but it's gonna say, and this one's got a the the other one's got a whole bunch of background stuff. We've mm-hmm. got like hiking boots and drumsticks and the globe. Yeah. And a cat clawing my leg. <laughs> right. Oh, wait. That's not on the can. No, that's, that's just not. Life. Okay. Last one is the shotgun wedding. A brown ale aged <laughs> on vanilla beans. <laughs> and this one is by Country Boy Brewing. And I, I just, I think I love everything about that. <laughs> Don't you? If you did this thematically, I. Yeah. And then, yes. and then you got the old school truck right there on the, on the label. Oh, that's I think beautiful. one of my family yep. members owns that truck. Oh, Oh, and it keeps going, Brenda. Go ahead. Pop the top. Do something spontaneous. This light brown ale is or aged on real vanilla beans is sure to come, sure to become one of your favorites. Just enough malt to balance the sweetness of the vanilla. Shotgun wedding is a decision you will never regret. <laughs> yep. I like and everything again, about this. This so is by far. Country Boy Brewing out of Georgetown, Kentucky. So yeah, that one seems really cool. And you know what's what's really funny about this is, uh, and I know uh, Hillbilly Select Review sent beer all around the country, including to us here in the land of snow. But um, you know what's what's strange is out of out of all the beer mail packages, I think everyone decided to post or who does reviews decided to post a review of this one. Oh really? And you know, I I think it's. It's kind of weird how, you know, this this beer community on YouTube can really take what before was probably a pretty obscure brown ale from some presumably small town in Kentucky I haven't heard of and kind of make it half well, famous. Well, to be fair, have you heard of any town in Kentucky no. but one? No. <laughs> no. I'm like, let's be, let's be fair to the entire state of Kentucky here. Right, yeah. So, yeah, but, like, I think it's really cool how you know, suddenly this, this particular beer went from relative obscurity and now has like five ridiculous videos on it on YouTube talking about it. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, mm-hmm. we're going to have to send the box back. <laughs> yeah, you think so? With the cat. With the cat? Oh, she took it over, didn't she? The beer left the box mm-hmm. and the cat now both fits and sits. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Good thing your return address is on it. Yep. Yeah. We'll take her back in like a month. Right. Yeah. All right. Um. So, uh, <laughs> full confession: this beer did arrive a few days ago, and um, I had some family obligations to tend to, so we had to wait. But that means it's already cold and ready for us to review today, so we don't even have to wait to chill it down. 
Yeah. So I, I see you see, immediately. We could have totally faked out like this crazy live time is passing sequence. Yeah. I don't in know. like no. the fakiest mystery science theater 3000 level way. Mm -hmm. But no. No, I do all the editing. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> but we could have done it live. I have a fish. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. This is right. my only problem. Well, big surprise here. You chose the cool brown ale on vanilla beans. So here you go. Why don't you do the honors? I then? will indeed. I, that means I have to drop the fish. Yeah, that, that's all right. Mm -hmm. So kids, when we get mauled by a cat mm -hmm. in the next minute, mm -hmm. because I'm not flailing a fish around the living room, just know yep. it was all for the beer. Right. And now I already, oh, seeing a lot of people in here, including Hillbilly Select Reviews. Thank hey! you again for all the great beer. We are excited to get into it. Uh, Drunken One is here, of course. He would never miss a live Keeping stream. Keeping us in line. That's right. Uh, and then uh, Whiskey Quest is in here, too, which I just, uh, oh I got connected to uh, that channel recently through the p good old Party Source Reviews channel. They did a cool whiskey tasting night, mm. so that was good. This smells a lot browner than it is. Mm -hmm. As, like, dumb of a sentence as that <laughs> sounded coming out of my mouth. It, like, for a brown ale, it's definitely got more of a porter stout malt smell to it. Mm-hmm. Look sure at, thing. Look at that lovely hat out of a can. Yeah, that does look a pretty, I mean, pretty nice out of a can. Part of it sure. is Brenda's aggressive pores, but you know. Yeah. All right. So Hillbilly Select Reviews is trying to get an opinion on this one. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that thing is dark. First of all. Good. Yeah. yeah. It's it's incredibly dark. Mm -hmm. Even even with the you know kind of floodlighting I have in here for the video, you barely get a tint of ruby on the edge. I so say, it's got a little bit of that amber base, and mm -hmm. I only because we're drinking it out of a tulip would I ever have noticed that. Right. <laughs> it's so subtle. Good creamy body to it, though. All right. Yeah. Let me have a sip. It doesn't taste nearly as hefty as it smells. Yes, yeah, so you get like all malt on the nose pretty much. Although, yeah. you know, my palate isn't exactly the most discerning, which is why I don't do review content all the time. But yeah, a, a ton of just malt on the nose. Not a whole lot of that vanilla um, coming through, but... Almost no vanilla in the nose. Can I not find an ABV or am I losing my mind? But yeah, and then you, you get this... Um, Get this delicious, um, oh, delicious malt backbone, and that vanilla just comes kicking through. But I think exactly what they said on the can, it is balanced too. It's not like they totally sold out to get as much vanilla as possible, you know? Yeah, I'd say beyond the like, it's it's got kind of that true vanilla bitterness right. to it. Yep, that I think goes really well with the malt pairing. Yeah. But it's not sticky, sweet. It's not like they try to do with a lot of stouts where you get more right. of that like Starbucks vanilla than uh, than actual vanilla, right? Yeah, it tastes like a vanilla bean complete with, you know, the the vague burniness that would be vodka extracted vanilla. Right. Yeah. All right. Now I should pick one, huh? Demonic. Hmm. Oh, choices, choices. I kind of want to see what happens when this warms up. All right. I think I'm going to go with the denied rye India pale ale. I'm give shocked. That a sh yeah, you're shocked. Shocked by that shocked. decision. All right. Well, Stunned and amazed. Mm -hmm. mm. Remember, yours will not all fit in the glass. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. Just remember to... Uh, mm, Ryan is now patenting. Ryan's aggressive pours. Yeah, it is very aggressively carbonated, but this one came out pretty dark for an IPA. Eh, not bad. But I guess it's got a lot of rye. I was over it, here so. thinking it was light for a stout. Oh. <laughs> it was light for a stout, huh? Well, yes, that's <laughs> true. It is light for a stout. <laughs> mm. So on the nose, uh, if I can smell through all of this foam, you um, can. <laughs> definitely get a ton of just of that rye mostly you get that rye spiciness on there mm -hmm. Woo! and then Ooh! you know Ooh! and then of course what they went ahead and did oh my. is just to pair up with that rye spiciness you got to double down on those spicy notes so you got to get those good like 
spicy piney hops in there too. So that's that's all I'm getting is just this good. Oh, good. You know how much I love those spicy piney hops. I know. I know. Yeah. So this one, uh, yeah, this one smells. It it it, it really it really comes at you. Hmm. Yeah, and the taste actually is a lot more subtle than the aroma. So I should hope so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not quite. It's not quite so. The aroma was a little. Yeah, the aroma kind of hits you in the face. The taste is a little more subdued, uh, but with the with a kind of gentle but slightly building bitterness on the back end, and then you definitely get that rye in there too. This smells like brew day. Like a brew day. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, when you're. When you're really getting into it and you haven't mellowed all of those flavors out. Mm-hmm. Yep. You just get that pure hop smell mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not nearly as sharp as it smelled though. You're right. right. Yep. It definitely doesn't doesn't uh, quite hit you over the head like the aroma does. Oh, but I cannot breathe in at the same time I'm drinking. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, because then it's a pine cone. Yeah, I like I said, it's got those piney resiny hops in there. Mm -hmm. Resiny is a word for what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's the sort of hoppiness that like burns on the sides of your tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can have that back now. Mm, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll stay over here with mm. mine. Yeah, so again, this was a uh, mile wide, right? Yep, the mild wide denied. Yeah, it's really, really solid. All right, so even far, just since the, the foam has settled down on this, it's got a totally different nose to it. Mm. Like it's gotten a lot, well, now that you've just inhaled that. Oh, yeah, you're it's right. It's gotten a lot sweeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this um, yeah, this fry IPA is really tasty. I dig it. I'm digging this brown. Mm. And I like that it's not crazily vanilla. Right. Yeah. Like I don't think had it... Had I not had the preconceived notion that there would be vanilla, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's what I would have tasted. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I enjoy, actually. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's what I that's what I really like is will really well crafted beers that are that are subtler sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I don't I don't need you to hit me over the head with three different weird flavors you managed to pack into a beer. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're making sours and you want to smack me over the head with every tropical fruit you've ever found. I can work with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm cool with that. Well, I have to say, Hillbilly Select Reviews, no doubt, has good taste. Thank you so much. God darn it. Now we have to make it to Kentucky, too. Uh -huh. Oh, shucks. Gotta add it to the list, I guess. Uh, Bumpy yeah. Road Brewery said that there's a bit of a vanilla bean shortage right now, and he hmm. couldn't make his vanilla porter because they didn't. They didn't, or they were too expensive because of the shortage. That's a okay, bummer. Okay, to be fair, they're always expensive, but... <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. I take it now worse than usual. Yeah, it must be. Hmm. You know, that wasn't on the beer news agenda this week, but <gasps> maybe maybe we need to add it. Vanilla mm -hmm. didn't make the beer news agenda? How do you not trace every possible adjunct to its its most likely economic conclusion? You're right. How how could I not have Folks, the time to do all doing? that? what is he doing? Clearly not anything with numbers, I guess. I... <laughs> Slacker. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's dive Let's dive <laughs> into some beer news, because why not? Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's all sorts of good ones. First one uh -oh. is, I don't know if you heard this, but at the end of October, the U.S. passed the 7,000 brewery mark. Which is pretty crazy. I think I've mentioned it in a couple of videos already, but that is a pretty insane number. Um, according to the Brewers Association, there were 7,082 as of October 31st. That's so many. <laughs> and then we know one that just opened up last month, too. So Granted, we're at least... We also know one that closed. Mm-hmm. Right, about yep. two blocks away from each other, kid ten. But if you if you want to know how much of an increase that is, that's actually about eleven hundred more than at the same time in two thousand seventeen, which is crazy that a thousand breweries have opened up in a year, which I think is is pretty nuts. Um, Let it be noted that I'm fighting the urge to make you get mauled by a kitten on live YouTube's, <laughs> and apparently there's about. 1,500 more that are in the planning stages or in the application oh my of goodness. getting permits across the country. So 
If you ever thought you could keep up with the craft beer world, you can't. I'm, I'm pretty give sure. I'm pretty you sure you need to give up, up now, as it is impossible. I mm, yeah. There's no way. Mm-hmm. I I can't even. We were playing the uh, what's going to close in our city game, which is a not fun game to play. Yeah, we were talking about which breweries were likely to close. Yeah, and I actually lost <laughs> dramatically. <laughs> Because yep. it closed like the next week, right. one that I said was going to be like was a staple and an institution and had been around for so long and would remain for many, many years. Yeah, it closed. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess the bright side is is that uh, you know, the industry's moving above replacement there. Uh, it's true. But it's kind of that crazy, like, okay, at what point are we just turning over the same building? Yeah, that is a good point, because the one that closed was about two blocks away from the one that right. opened. Yeah. So it's like, all right, you're not serving a new market or a new location. Mm -hmm. What are what are we doing here? Yeah, you're right. You just got to keep hoping that uh, people just get more hardcore about it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, to be fair, the new one is really cool. Yeah, that's true. It definitely is. And mm -hmm. we don't have many Vegas gambling themed breweries. <laughs> yeah, so. that's kind of weird for this uh, this part of the world. Yeah, a yeah. mm -hmm. little, little bit. Yeah, I'll get, we'll give them a quick shout out. Uh, Stack Deck Brewing in St. Paul, Minnesota. They got this. They got sweet like vintage casino theme. Whoever did very their cool. graphics. Yep. Yeah, very if nice stuff. If you see this, yeah. probably not. Please get in touch. I just want a fangirl because you're amazing. Mm -hmm. Here goes Brenda on the graphics again. Yeah, that's right. That didn't take long, did it? <laughs> it happens. Yep. Uh, Hillbilly Select says uh, Kentucky has great beer to go with the bourbon, which oh, uh, bourbon is also my liquor of choice. So that's like the second. Well, what's the, the Chattanooga Whiskey Company glass I got you? Great whiskey comes um, from great beer. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. You guys yeah. have probably seen it on this channel yeah. about 800 times. Mm -hmm. Yep. On the 10th, also checking in. How you doing tonight? Because it was such a good quote. I bought glassware. Right. Yeah. I don't buy glassware. Mm -hmm. you, may, you may notice our... Oh, no, you can't see them because it's black on dark brown. Yep. I was like, almost all of our glassware either comes from festivals or comes from festivals. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of that brewery that closed, they specialized in cask ales, which the classic complaint about cask ales in America is that they're too warm. Which uh, is totally wrong. Well, <laughs> maybe. Sorry, this was a common... Thing when I was going to study abroad in the UK and people figured out I like beer and they're like, oh, well, are you ready to have all of your beer served warm? I was like, what do you mean my beer is served warm? I don't want warm beer. No, my beer is not served frigid. There's a difference between not frigid and too warm. Well, the UK health inspectors oh, Lord. just went through and decided to take a look at cask ale temperatures being served across the country and before you say it's it it's not warm some uh, of them are warm approximately two percent were served above 20 degrees c which is above 68 degrees fahrenheit what where, where they were being poured what about two percent of cask ales across the uk are above that like that's like a dangerous threshold too. uh yeah. yeah you are well within your bacterial growth right. ratings yep now well well within and <laughs> and seven in ten pints of cask ale were served warmer than the recommended 11 to 13 degrees Celsius. So actually, UK beer might actually be too warm. Okay, kids. <laughs> now that was just setting me up. <laughs> yes, it was. I totally set you up for that. <laughs> Thank you for opening the door, laying out a welcome mat, mm -hmm. ushering me inside. Yep. Yep. Ugh. That's what it was all about. I just Well, <laughs> I never had a too warm beer. <laughs> So good work, London. Good work. Yeah, but I thought it was totally crazy that they are letting beer get above that's, 68 degrees. That's no bueno. Yeah, that's that's way too high to that's, be serving that's beer. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. That is 
literally the danger zone. Right. Yeah. So you're there. Yeah. You are right up to the and danger like, zone. I'm like, don't get me wrong. I actually like it, uh, uh, especially bitters. Bitters yes. are so good out of cast because there there's something you just don't capture when it's freezing. Right. Yep. And I mean, I get this. I'm someone that yells about the Guinness Extra Cold Tap all the time because that's all I want. Mm -hmm. But there are some beers you need to warm up a little bit. Right. Yep. Yeah. Bitters are definitely one of them. And then there's something about the way just the- <laughs> Here, have a fish. Yeah. <laughs> just the, the nice, a little bit of extra creaminess you get at the top of the beer. Yeah. Just because of how how the, um, the hand pressure- pulling Yeah, works. the hand pulling works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very good. I also kind of just like inflicting trauma on my bartenders. Well, you gotta give, you know, give them a little, give them a little arm workout, you know. You know, you know that's, it's, a, that's it's the deal. Fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I do twelve ounce curls all the time. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Bumpy Road says he prefers his beer around fifty to sixty. So, mm -hmm. well, that's nice, but you don't usually store it at that temperature. Yeah, actually. that's true. At least not, you know, tapped. Right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right what else we got going on in the wide world of beer yeah sorry i set you up for that one maybe i'll do a little better yeah you, know, you, here, you walked me right in on that yeah, one. yeah so we've heard of the so i've talked a lot about breweries that have another business inside of them whether they be like the brew stillery is my favorite one because we have a Emma local one that we like to go to a lot. Even so. though it's illegal in our state. Yeah. Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you got the brew stillery. So that's a brewery and distillery. To be fair, they are not illegal. Yeah. So because I they don't allow liquor to leave their premises in drink form. Right. You can only buy it in bottles and you can't drink it there. Right. There we go. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then there's always the classic, you know, brew pub, you get the brewery restaurants, things like that. Um, but one of the rising things now are brewery and coffee roasters <gasps> combining forces. Yeah. And yeah, see, I knew this would be right up My your alley. My wake up beer could yeah. be entirely house made. Yeah, that's right. So you would, you would get the coffee roasted ah! there and the beer there. Um, so yeah. And you know, that, that's really interesting, too, because coffee beers are really popular. Um, but, you know, being able to roast coffee to the specifications you need for the stout, I think it'd be really awesome. What's up? You have, like, manspread over the entire couch. <laughs> <laughs> and either I'm going to go sit back there or you're going to close your knees like a lady. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Sure thing. <laughs> I realized as I was like leaning out of the frame that Ryan has just taken over the whole couch. <laughs> Bye. Always go down drinking. Um. Yes. I love the idea of a coffee beer that all happens in house. Right. Yeah. Like so, I can work with that. Yeah. They do everything from roasting to brewing to everything. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then you can, you know, you can go in there for a nice cup of coffee too. You don't have to get a beer. Right. You don't want to. Mm -hmm. I, I, as Occasional DD would totally love that. Right. Mm -hmm. Or just, you know, beer beer in a bump. Yeah. With my, mm -hmm. with my fresh roast. Yeah, but you want know, a little caffeine with your beer yeah, there. Yeah, I mm -hmm. love caffeine with my beer. Mm -hmm. This is how I learned about cold brew. Right. Yep. Oh, oh, that is a story. <laughs> Ryan might remember this story. Mm -hmm. We have a local brewery that is is famous for their porter. And they do a wake up beer, which is their porter and a, a hefty size shot of cold brew coffee from a local mm -hmm. coffee roaster. And a lot of the, the breweries here have their coffee from the same place and they're pretty well known. So the guy, you know, pulls out the growler of cold brew and there's only a little left in the bottom. So he pours my like double shot and there's probably an almost shot left in the bottom. Yep. He thinks. <laughs> he thinks. So yeah. he just goes, hey, we're, you know, almost closing up for the night. Chances of somebody getting a shot of coffee in their beer 30 minutes before the brewery closes. Not great. I mean, I had just done it. But he goes, so do you want the rest? I'm like, sure. I like coffee. Mm -hmm. Coffee's good. Yeah. I already got the regular serving. Right. What for 
poor person would I be with a little more coffee in my coffee beer shack? Mm-hmm. So he pours the rest in and we both realize as he's pouring that I think there's a little more left than he thought there was. Yep. And I basically had beer flavored coffee. Oh yeah. At about 1130 mm-hmm. and was up until about Tuesday. Yeah. You were wired. Woo! Mm-hmm. It was the most exciting beer I've ever had. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Uh, Whiskey Quest says uh, his ideas always get taken. So apparently he wanted to do the uh, coffee brewery thing too, which I think it'd be good, you know? Mm -hmm. No, it was something. They were freezing something. Oh, freezing beer. And then the party officer said that here in Cincinnati, they have alcoholic beer ice. Well, see, did I not tell you that the party source is the best place? I do. Party source. We need to chat. Yeah, that's right. We might need to take a beer trip to Ohio. You have I'm ideas. just saying. It's mm-hmm. so, okay. Ryan the other day found out about coffee cubes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because he made too much coffee one morning. So, you know, I poured it into the ice cube tray and mm-hmm. added a dash of milk because I like a little milk in my coffee. I'm sorry. <laughs> I popped it in the freezer. I was like, well, what do you put those in? Cat. <laughs> He's like, well, what do you put those in? I was like, uh, coffee. <laughs> because then you don't dilute your iced coffee and in fact it gets stronger the longer you drink it remember when our cat was small <laughs> i do i remember when our cat used to sit on our laps mm-hmm. and behave nicely instead of i'm sorry if you guys just hear jingling oh <laughs> we're getting really into the christmas spirit okay yes you know what these stories tie together way better than i thought because we got to go to ohio for yeah. our brewery tour what better way to get to Ohio than to fly to London first so we can b- fly on the b- Brew Dog airline that they're chartering from London in wha- February? Wha- they're going to do, ha- they're gonna do two ha- weekend flights from London to ha- Columbus, ferrying beer fans back and forth across the Atlantic to their different facilities. So, yeah, they're going to take. I don't take- want anything else. Excuse me, I don't want anything else for Christmas. I just want this. And, yeah, of course, you book a seat on the BrewDog chartered plane. So what are they going to give you? Beer? Oh, you're going to get, you're going to have quite the tipsy flight up there at 32,000 Tipsy? Feet, cruising across the Atlantic, because you're going to get at least several flights in flight. So there you go. Yeah, so if you're interested in that, you can go I'm to interested. Brew, Brew Dog's website. I'm for interested more info on that. Yeah, February oh, 2019. I have to go to London. Mm-hmm. Oh shot. Oh shucks. Oh bachelorette. Oh, are you gonna do that for a bachelorette party? Me and me are going. To yeah, London. just you. Yeah. <laughs> me, myself, and I will mm. have a lovely time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think they're doing two flights in February. Of- <laughs> Just full of beer, you know, and Brew Dog has always been kind of crazy, those guys. They've they've yes, done super crazy. That's weird, why I love them. Weird things, strange. They had a TV brews. show. Yep, they had a TV show for a little while. And now they're chartering an airplane to do a crazy tour of all their plants around the world. So kind of cool to see. Yeah, are you missing out? No, I'm you know? buying tickets. Oh, you're buying tickets. All right. Sounds good. Don't mind me and my lack of vacation because we're taking a honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's no fair. You get to go to Vegas. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't get to fly on the beer dog plane. Seems pretty sweet. Yeah, Yeah, that's why I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. mm -hmm. I'm going. And, oh, one of the cool things. Sorry, I missed a detail. All the cabin crew is going to be Cicerone trained. So you're going to have some real beer experts on the (gasps) plane, too. Yeah, that's right. Isn't that kind of cool? I can't do. I can't live in a world where I'm not on that plane. <laughs> yeah, you. Not only do you get the beer, but the people pouring you the beer like know everything about no, the beer. All I want is to be on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you understand. <laughs> I will give up every Christmas and birthday present for the next five years. Oh goodness, that's a that's quite a negotiation there. <laughs> <laughs> You guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll have to we'll have to see if we can get Brenda on the plane. She can we won't get Brenda on us. the plane. Yeah. He's lying. I'm not going to be on the plane. It's very upsetting. And I want to be on the plane. Okay. I want the balloon. Yep. So we know about Brute IPAs, the latest beer trending style. As we've discovered, Brenda doesn't hate them. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah, you like the nice dry, what? dry flavors. Mm-hmm. Seriously, yeah, very though, good. we swapped one day. He had the black ale stout. Yeah, it's a stout. Mm-hmm. Was it a stout? Yeah. I ordered the stout. He ordered the brewed IPA. And we both liked each other's better. And mm-hmm. I think we got body snatched. Yeah, we must have. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. So, like, brute IPAs are pretty trendy. But what do you think the next trend is? Um, well, we've passed pumpkin. Mm-hmm. We're kind of over the chai thing. Mm-hmm. Well, in California... Oh, no. They're drinking no. avocado beers. No. That's right. You want to add a little creaminess without no. without without lactose? No. Are you lactose intolerant? No. Then drink some <laughs> avocado beers and don't listen to her. <laughs> I mean, I keep telling you. Right. So I a lot of brewers why? are experimenting with how to add avocado to beers, especially because it's a good way to make beer really creamy while still being vegan for those uh, those who are concerned about that. Okay. But wait. Good and effective are two different words, and I think you need to examine well, your use I'm, of that. I'm, I'm sure people enjoy it. They must. I, yeah. but why? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or um, some people do it, you know, a lot of people do it, which is kind of a, a generic pale ale, but um, people have also kind of been doing it with lighter bodied colches and things like that that take the flavor really well no um no i don't want that yeah so avocado beer you can keep an eye out for that you know what i wonder if anybody's done avocado beer reviews yet this could be a youtube first for us if we can track one down okay but you have to dress up as an avocado at the time (laughs) ouch cats i have to dress up as an avocado well if you're doing the beer review that sounds kind of hard no wait I want a, a pregnant woman with the Halloween costume where, like, the baby bump is the avocado pit. Oh. Wait, no, that wouldn't work. She can't review the beer. Crud! Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Road bump! Yeah. <laughs> um, yep. mm-hmm. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. Yep, beer belly okay. as maternity Halloween costume mm-hmm. reviews beers. Right. I got it. There you go. Let's be real. Some <laughs> we're on beer YouTube, guys. Right. <laughs> yeah. We have beer a lot. Oh, this denied was so good. Mm. Did you did you not deny the denied? Mm-mm. Nope, I cannot deny. It was very good. <laughs> we are not. Our puns are not. No the beer was good. Yeah, Our we're, puns we're are pretty not. off tonight. But mm-hmm. avocado is. Yeah, avocados. Why? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. I do not share the millennial facet cat. Come here, kitten. I do not share the millennial fascination with avocados. Right. Like I just I, I just don't. Yep. They're overpriced and they're kind of okay, but they're mostly just mushy. Yep. Yeah, uh, I got nothing. Yeah. Speaking of uh trending cat's gonna maul us on live. Another YouTube. trending beer out of California. Um, Sierra Nevada yes. was very close. Their main brewing plant is very close to where the wildfires were happening in October oh, and November. I think I know where you're going with yeah, this. Yeah, so they created a an, a quick IPA recipe to make a beer called Resilience to raise money for yeah. relief efforts for those fires. And they used their vast amount of beer world connections to convince over 400 breweries across the country to brew this same beer. Yeah. Isn't somebody doing it locally? Yeah. Oh, there's tons of local places. So, you know, they have a whole website dedicated to finding the closest place brewing resilience near you. So you can go and support the California wildlife or wildfire relief efforts yep i mean there might be some wildlife components involved yeah absolutely yeah so uh but this was like a really cool effort and what i what i think it really showed is just how much camaraderie that there is in the beer scene across the country well yeah that's a really cool connecting movement and this probably has to be the biggest effort to all brew the same beer that i have ever heard of for sure that's the really impressive yeah i mean when when you get four, 500 breweries signing up to all brew the same beer. And 
and more importantly, raise money for the same cause, right. which I think is is crazy too. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for the Resilience IPA at a, at a tap room near you. Um, head over to Sierra Nevada's website too to check out uh, where it's being brewed near you, where you can get some. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of the brew days were in uh, November, so we should be seeing them come out relatively shortly here, I would think. Um, this particular article I'm reading off of was dated November 21st. Um, perhaps I should, uh, I should go check it out. Yeah. So the, the beer will be on the shelves by early 2019. So yeah, uh, it's, it'll be really cool to see all the places that are, um, that are brewing this and it is, it is, there are so many breweries brewing it. It is hard to actually search through all the breweries that are brewing. Oh, six one two brew is the one. Yep. So six one two here locally is doing it. You know, I, but you know, you can go to their Sierra Nevada's website and you will find just a crazy number of breweries doing this for the new year. And I think it'll be really, really cool to uh, to go out and drink this. And and you know, I talked at the kind of the beginning of the stream here about how you know, a couple people sending this particular shotgun wedding beer around the country really got everybody kind of in the beer tube community rallied around this single beer. Um, yeah. You know, it'll be kind of cool to share an experience like that, but just on an even more ridiculous scale with this resilience IPA. On that note, mm -hmm. what if we all reviewed it? Oh yeah, you're right. I should if organize we can all a big get it, live. Why don't we all review it? All right, that's what we'll do. We'll do it here on Beer by the Numbers. I will host a big live review of the Resilience IPA. Let's do it. Sounds like a great. We plan. don't even have to send it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Most of us can get it. That's exactly right. Let's do it. Sounds like a perfect idea. So, if uh, by the way, if you're a brewtuber out there who wants to um, <laughs> join in this review effort. Uh, I guess you can let me know in the chat and I'll message you later. But um, so far, it's uh, us, apparently. Yeah, that's right. And I don't like IPAs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's Ryan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. So if you want to join us to review the Resilience IPA that's going to be available way across the country, let's all get together and do it this upcoming uh, January, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh, that'll shucks. Be... We'll have to support people with our beer drinking. I know. What a what a shame. <laughs> what oh, a shame. darn. Mm. All right. See, J.O. at the Party Stars is already in. Woo! Already enthusiastically, it enthusiastically is now volunteered. officially a party. Uh, yeah, that's right. We got the Party Source on board. We're <laughs> ready. <laughs> All right, so one of the one of the other cool things, Kellogg's uses its rejected cornflakes to make beer to cut down on food waste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so in on this. Yeah, isn't that pretty sweet? So I love this. So you know about about uh, thirty percent of the grain bill is cornflakes. Okay. And then, what constitutes a rejected cornflake? You know, I'm like, not is really it a sure. Box that yep. is make the cut like is it a packaging issue because hmm. i mean it can't it obviously can't be something with the corn flake or you wouldn't be able to use it right and if it's just because it looks funny right you wouldn't really throw that out because corn flakes already look funny scroll back down i think i saw it yeah i think it's it no, I, scroll down i think it's more around um you know Oh, if the flake edible is... food that doesn't make it to the cereal box, cereal is perfectly safe to eat, but the flakes might be too big, too small, or broken, so not good enough for our packs. Yep. Huh. So inconsistent size, things like that. Something you'd have to bite in half in the bowl, you know. It all squatches together anyway. I know, but you sorry, know. I I think of like corn flakes and grape nuts on the right. same level of right. like consistent sizing. Yeah. So what they're doing. Either way. <laughs> yeah. So what they're doing, and this I think, um, yeah, a couple breweries are doing it. Um, one in the UK and one in Massachusetts. It looks like. Um, yeah, but they're making, um, uh, what's the IPA called? Um, throwaway IPA. The throwaway IPA. That's Sorry, right. Sorry, I'm reading. Yep. So they're trying to cut down on uh, food waste by not, uh, not throwing it away. So that's really cool. I dig that. Mm -hmm. I am all for, for pre-consumer food waste reduction. Right. Yeah. 
That's a really cool thing to do. Buy mm-hmm. the bumpy vegetables, folks. Yep, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yep, go to the farmer's market. <laughs> Sorry, there's there's a company I'm a little obsessed with that makes their their whole business model is supplying consumers with like off looking produce. Yep. So, you know, the the two-legged carrot or the bumpy tomato or, like, the squash zini. Right. Yep. And they just ship it to your house. Yeah. And it's all the stuff that you usually wouldn't go at the farmer's market or is too ugly for the organic grocery store. Right. Just like, yes, please. Yeah. Send mm-hmm. it here. They're not in our area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing's ever in our area. I know. We have so many breweries and yet nothing is here. <laughs> Oh, grass is always greener, isn't it, Brenda? We live in Minnesota. There is no grass. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty snowy out there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, but good news. The Bearded Beardman is in for our mega review, as is, of course, Drunken One. Hey! Yep, uh-huh. I'm shocked. Yep. Mm-hmm. Truly, I am shocked. Yeah. Uh, Bumpy Road, wondering if any New Hampshire breweries is going to brew that Resilience IPA. I'm sure they will. Uh, yeah, head over to the Sierra Nevada website to check it out. So, there's a bunch. Yeah, they have just a ton listed there. There's so, a bunch. There's yeah. a bunch. There's a okay, bunch. Okay, I got one more story, and this one's kind of weird. Okay. Taco Bell is expanding across the UK, but in order to lure millennials oh, wait, in. Wait, wait, wait. What? UK. Yeah. Seriously? <laughs> Stop it. Hey, you man. already let KFC ruin your lives. Hey, man. Taco Bell. Everyone Bell's. let McDonald's ruin their lives. Mm-hmm. Taco Bell? Mm-hmm. Standards. <laughs> it's not going to be good. It's well, not good here. Well, I tell you what. They're serving beer at the Taco Bells there. What? Oh, no. Now you might. No. Okay, please tell me none of these Taco Bells are equipped with restrooms. Now you... Because this just cannot be. Now you might ask why. Yes. Because in the U.S., Taco Bell is seen very much as a fast food... Garbage. As a fast food grab-and-go restaurant. Brenda, we might get sponsored by Taco Bell. We're never going to get sponsored by Taco Bell. They're right down the road and we will never get sponsored. You can't just come on here and say they're garbage. Anyway. Well, they are garbage. I love them. (laughs) Do not get me wrong. I love to eat it. That doesn't make it good. I eat a lot of things that are not great for me. Yeah. So. That doesn't make them not garbage. In the U.S. Yes. Fast food consumers are much more likely to get their food to go than European consumers. European consumers are much more likely to sit down and eat at the restaurant. So what do you want to do when you want to get more money out of people coming into a restaurant? Drinks. You serve drinks. So you got to pour some beer there, you know? Okay, the only reason I would be tempted to sit in a Taco Bell and eat it is purely for the reason that if it gets remotely unhot, it is then cold garbage and cannot be. Yeah, and actually Mexican food is very popular in Europe right now. With Chipotle. Oh, Chipotle is going gangbusters over there, too, by the way. Mm-hmm. You guys just tell me it's gotten better. Because the last time I had Mexican food in Europe. Uh-huh. You guys. <laughs> you guys. Yeah. Uh, in Europe, Taco Bell is going to have probably 50 locations by the end of the year. So they're really growing fast over there, man. They mm. love they love the uh, they love the Mexican food over mm. there. <laughs> Sorry, Bumpy Road had a fantastic comment. <laughs> Budweiser will probably use rejected Czech cereal. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Only the rice checks. Only the rice checks. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, that was always so weird when they were like, barley, hops, and rice. That's our three ingredients in Budweiser. I have like, questions. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I think we've missed some steps. Mm-hmm. On the fundamental how you brew. That's right. That's right. Chart. It's That's a very right. dry beer. Yeah. True. True. All right. And unfermented. Well, that's all the beer news I had, Brenda. So we made you made it through. Good work. Mm-hmm. But I still have beer. Oh, you still have beer? All right. Well, do you know anything new in the beer world? I don't. No, not really. We went to a new brewery. It's stout season, which Ooh! is pretty great. I have to give a shout out. Oh, okay. I have found my people. Okay. And as a, I, I have to preface this because, you know, I have a lot of people. 
as a female beer consumer yep. in a kind of public beer world, I do not always see a lot of me. Yep. While I love you all, there are not a lot of female beer swilling folks right. out in the in the universe. And recently, through a local beer blogger, I found a company called Girls and Craft. And they have a lot of super cool beer apparel for women and do a lot of supporting of females in the beer brewing industry. And I found them through a giveaway and then just kind of kept following. So they're actually doing a secret Santa. So for once, I am doing a secret Santa of my own yeah. with other women nice. and not just tagging along on Ryan's random beer exchanges. And I'm so excited. Yeah, that's really cool. So we get to go shopping for that this week. And I am ecstatic. Yeah, that's really fun. And then I think the other thing, too, about that, too, is... Um, there's a lot of unisex brewery apparel out there. You guys, <laughs> there is a lot of unisex brewery apparel out there. And I mean, like, look, I, I look good in it. <laughs> I mean, I also look great in it, sure. thanks. Yep. Uh, let's, let's be real. We usually wear the same beer apparel. Right. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But it would be really nice... To have something tailored for a female form. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'll admit, I squealed like a small child going through their website and then basically just put the link to their website in my Christmas list. Yep. And was like, I want this. Right. <laughs> pick, pick anything. Yeah. Here mm -hmm. are my sizes. Yeah. Because I'm sorry, they have things like sweatpants. Mm hmm. I didn't know I needed a pair of beer sweatpants yeah you know you don't find a lot of uh brewery branded sweatpants out pants. there do you yeah mm -hmm. one can only have so many t-shirts <laughs> yeah that's true. one can only have so many mid-arm straight cut slightly too large because they're unisex sizing brewery t-shirts mm -hmm. in cotton right yeah yeah, so it's it's nice to see somebody developing, uh, you know, some women-oriented, great brew clothing. Yeah. I like it. Well, and it's also really great to be in a beer community where you're, uh, not to sound like stereotypical about it, but not the only woman in the room. Right. Yep. I don't mind that, but it's kind of nice to see somebody else. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it seems like a really cool community. And I'm excited. Yeah, great, great way to shout them out. I like it a lot. So yeah, I told them I'd shout them out. Mm -hmm. There it was. Yeah, good work. If anybody that receives my Christmas list is listening. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> there, There is space for beer things. Yeah, absolutely. There's a little space. A little space. <laughs> <laughs> there is much space in my closet. Right. And then Ryan can have his own beer clothes. Yes. And I'll stop mm -hmm. stealing. No, I won't. <laughs> I'm going to keep stealing I'm them. I'm going to keep stealing them. Fair well, enough. I thought it was funny, though. When we were, I won a shirt from a local brewery, Go Bauhaus, Yay Flight Night, um, that is featured on drone racing video, uh, Sport of the Future. <laughs> Look at me go. Um, I won a free t shirt and I'm picking out t shirts and I automatically grabbed one that both of us would like yep because so often with our brewery related apparel we both wear it yep. because we're both beer people and why buy two things and i was like wait hang on my shirt and they had one vaguely like female cut piece of clothing i'm like this will do mm -hmm. favorite shirt yeah only i can wear it right and it's, it's just that level of, like, license and ownership in the beer community to have something that, like, you feel like fits your style. Right. And it's the whole thing we've talked about of, you know, being a little beer snobby but still remaining inclusive and, you know, not bashing people for starting with things that taste like a Bud Light. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, and having approachable beers versus... Oh, well, if you haven't tried this $70 bottle, 
do you even be here? Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of that same approach of, of inclusivity. And if you want the beer scene to grow, foster it. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that soapbox. <laughs> I will step down from. Yeah, really good stuff. All right, I got a video coming out this week. What? The you make videos? Yeah, I know, right? I do make videos. Yeah. On the history of the milk stout, which has a really interesting origin. Mm. Out of uh, out of the UK, um, it's kind of it's kind of interesting um, how that came about and what the what the real motivation behind it was. Because you know when we talk about brewers experimenting today and what they're trying to create and things like that, it's really all around you know flavor and trying to make something crazy that kind of differentiates you in the market. But you know that was not at all the case with the milk stout. It came from a totally different headspace. So I'm really excited to cover that this week. I just realized I have no idea of anything about milk stouts. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna learn something too. Like, hang huh? on. Usually I have at least some sort of clue. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> the unfortunate thing is, is I, I have a bunch of homebrew to drink, but now I want to go out and buy a left hand milk stout too, though, because those are just freaking delicious. I love those. Well, things. maybe on our liquor store date to buy Secret Santa beers, mm -hmm. a a stout with widget mm. could could be included in the mix. Sure. Because you know I love me a good widget. Oh yeah, good stuff. All right, uh, but other than that, I don't know. We I might uh, be taking a little break around the holidays. I'm going to be working on some longer form video projects around. Unless that. you want to see him live streaming from the car as we drive to all of the Christmases. Yeah, you're right. Could do that all too. All of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we'll hopefully some some Nebraska beers. Right. Possibly some Iowa beers. Yep. In our future. Yeah. So if anybody wants to um, join us for that Resilience IPA review, please let me know down in the comments section below. Shoot me a message. Let me know in the live chat. I'd love to have you be a part of that as I try to figure out how to make this happen now. <laughs> Technic from a technical standpoint, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. So Ideas woman. Right. That's right. Um, yeah. I, other than that, don't really have much more. Let's uh, Let's finish off these beers. And uh, have a good night, everybody. Cheers. Oh, beer, I gotta get.